Here are some easy tips and tricks to find great deals on NFT projects and help you flip them for a profit. If you find any of these tips helpful, feel free to tip me by leaving a like on the video down below. It's completely free and rumor has it that people that like this video end up having really great success with their NFT purchases. Okay, maybe I made that part up, but I do appreciate you leaving your support all over that like button down below. Tip number one, create a project review checklist. I have a seven step process that I go through on each new project that I look at. If the project doesn't pass one of the seven levels, then I completely ignore it and move on to the next project. With hundreds of new NFT projects dropping every single day, you need to be able to identify which ones have potential for success. And you need to be very picky about which ones you decide to ape into. My checklist goes like this. Number one is art the uniqueness, the quality, and the style. Now, all of this is kind of subjective, but you'll know crappy art when you see it. If the art does not look like it took more than 10 minutes to make each individual piece, it's probably a bad project. Number two, and this is arguably the most important piece that if it doesn't pass this test, nine times out of 10, probably not good to ape into. The founders, who are they? Are they anonymous or are they revealing who they are? Do they have a good track record of success with other projects? To me, many times this is a make or break factor. Just look at things like 888 Genesis or Cryptodes that are backed by notable people in the scene. Those projects, although the art and just the tweet aren't anything special, the founders are the reason those projects are doing so well. Number three, community. This is an obvious one and probably talked about way too much on NFT YouTube videos, but it's important to look at the project's Twitter engagement, make sure that there's actual people following this project. And generally what I like to do is go into the Discord and just chat with people in the general Discord chat and see what kind of responses you get. Number four, marketing. Is the team good at marketing their project? Or is it getting seen by literally no one, at which point no one will buy into it and you'll be stuck holding a useless piece of NFT garbage? Number five, the roadmap or the white paper. Does the project have a clear vision? Does it have milestones? And does it have a realistic roadmap? What's the timeline looking like on some of those objectives? Number six is utility. And you can break this down into like a DAO or tokenomics and all different ways you can provide utility to a project. It could be a launch pad. The number one question to ask for a project's utility is what is the value that's being provided day one after the project mints? And then what does it provide value wise in three to six months? If you can't quickly identify reasons the project has value, it's probably not a good bet. And number seven is scarcity slash rarity. It's important to note that not all projects are created equal. Some have a hundred items in the collection, a thousand, and some have 10,000. And that number difference makes a huge, huge difference when flipping projects. For example, you can see here that the fungi gen which was mostly minted for around 4 ETH are now up to 14 ETH floor, but you can only see that there's about 20 listed. And that's because there's only a hundred of them. So the floor price for these should stay a lot higher because there's a lot less people that own them. And even though this is a brand new project, you can see that this floor is doing incredibly well compared to the mint price, as opposed to something like Mutant 8 Yacht Club, where it is a reputable brand. It's a blue chip that came off of Bored Ape. So it has value, but because there's almost 20,000 of these, the floor has declined over time and it's around the price that it was minted for. That's a quick rundown of the project checklist that I use, but if you want a full breakdown that really dives deep onto things you need to look for and how you need to determine which projects are good and which ones are not, I'm actually opening up my Patreon page for the very first time, where all the people who support my Patreon will get access to the full checklist that I use for all my NFTs. That's just one of the many NFT tools that I'm offering over on my Patreon for my first supporters, so if that's interesting to you, definitely check it out. Link in the description below. Okay, back to rarity and scarcity, which leads me into tip number two, how to find great deals on floor priced NFTs. I've talked about it before and I'll probably talk about it again. Rarity.tools, and I'm not sponsored by the way, I wish I was, is an amazing tool to help you guys narrow down and find great deals much quicker than you're going to be able to do that on things like OpenSea or Solonar or any other major platform. A quick example here, I'm going to use the Doge Pound Puppies. You can see here I've toggled on the buy now on the filters and I've sorted it by price low to high. This basically shows us the lowest price NFTs that are available right now. You can see the floor price is 0.63 ETH, which is the lowest one right here. The simplest way to go about it is to look at the overall rarity score, which is up top here. So this one's ranked 6,959th out of the 7,000 that exist. So it's a pretty low one. That's why it's on the floor. But if we scroll down a little bit and look for some deals here, all these are in the thousands, thousands, thousands. But this one is ranked 824th overall on rarity, which is only 0.17 ETH more expensive 
expensive than the lowest floor priced puppy, but the rarity on this one is much lower. It's 824 overall, which puts it in the top 1000. And the most likely reason for that is either the nine trait count, which is pretty rare, and then the Viking helmet, which you can see here only has 115 of these that exist. If we go and look at that, it is by far the cheapest of the Viking helmet trait. And the next cheapest one is 0.18 ETH higher. You can see this one's actually better than all of these, except for this one right here, which is listed at almost five ETH. So it's safe to say that this one is undervalued compared to other traits and compared to the overall rarity of it. That took us about 30 seconds to find that this is gonna be a pretty good deal. Another example is Bears Deluxe. Again, we're looking at the floor here on the available listed ones, price low to high. We got a near top thousand ranked one as well. Again, there's about 7,000 in this project, so it's not a top 10%, but it is almost one of the top 1,000 and it's listed for two ETH, which is just 0.1 ETH higher than this one. All these bears are going for around two ETH, but this one is by far are the best rarity score. Another way you can look through these is you can go and actually toggle down traits. So I have under traits right here, I've selected two traits because that is only 28 of these toads have two traits. Outside of the seven traits, which only have 16 of them, this is one of the rarest traits you can have in the Cryptodes NFT collection. Lowest one is 9.99 ETH. We'll say it's 10 ETH. The next lowest one is 14.5 ETH. So that is a 4.5 Ethereum gap between the lowest one on the floor and the next lowest, which again the ones after that are right about the same 14.9 15 and then it jumps up to 19 so if this one sells the floor then for just two traits becomes 14.5 eth which is a 50 percent jump from the current floor so if you bought this toad you could immediately list it for 14.4 to keep the floor but you are now obviously earning 4.4 eth higher if you go ahead and sell that toad right away using rarity tools you can actually find some incredible deals sometimes on a previous video as you can see right here i actually found what i should have picked up at the moment when i was recording i should have bought this one this was an 1100 ranked doge at the literal floor of the entire project and the person who picked that up right away when it was listed got a really great buying price tip number three mint early and mint often it may sound slightly obvious but minting while avoiding major gas wars and major gas fees especially on ethereum is easily the best way to have low risk and potentially very high reward on any project. If you're using the checklist that we already talked about and finding good projects, it's unlikely that that project's floor is gonna drop below the mint price too quickly. Now, if you can't mint a project because you're not there or the gas fees are too high, immediately go and look at the project on the secondary market like OpenSea or Solonar. Some people will wanna sell that project right away and sometimes you can actually get a really good deal almost near mint price on the secondary market while avoiding all of those major gas and transaction fees. So mint if you can, but if you can pick up one that it's near mint price on the secondary market and you think that project's got good potential, that's a plus. I've talked about this before in other videos, but you can find all the upcoming drops to mint these new projects when they come out on calendar sites such as Rarity Tools, Upcoming Projects, or HowRare.is. Or you can bypass all of that difficult work of sifting through hundreds of different projects each day and just support my Patreon where I actually go and do all that hard work for you. Another shameless plug, I've made an NFT calendar that I use personally myself all the time that goes through all of the other NFT calendars and narrows it down to the projects that have passed my checklist. In other words, I pick out the highest potential projects and put them on my own monthly calendar. So if you're interested in getting access to my calendar and, and following the flips I'm looking to do, that's all part of the Patreon as well. Tip number four. This is gonna sound extremely obvious, but I don't think a lot of people are doing it to the level they need to be. Follow big and successful NFT collectors on crypto Twitter. There are usually just two ways you're gonna find NFT gems in the space right now. One is through word of mouth. If you have friends in the scene that recommend a product to you that they find, you'll probably come across some really good projects that way. Two, you go on crypto Twitter and you follow people in this space who have a history of success. Follow people that own CryptoPunks, that own Board Ape Yacht Club early on, that own Cool Cats early on, that own CyberKongs. This is the smart money that understands this scene better than anyone because they were buying it before anyone else was actually interested in it. So if you follow their moves, a lot of times you'll have very good success rate. That's all I got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the tips definitely tip me again by leaving a like on the video it's free and it just takes two seconds and i appreciate it so much subscribe if you haven't already we're almost at 4,000 subs which is crazy enjoy the videos we'll see you guys all for another one soon take care